here on the slopes of Little Round Top. This is at the 83rd Pennsylvania Monument. Um, you can see there's their left flank marker down there. Um, so their right flank would have stretched across the lower slopes here of Little Round Top. Um, although I can't see it through the woods. But then you can see up there Towards the crest is the 44th New York Castle. Um, they were the next regiment um, in line of the uh, regiments of Strong Vincent's Brigade uh, that defended Little Round Town. And uh, this is looking towards the direction from which Law's Alabamians would have come um, from Big Round Top across the ravine there. And then over to the left. Um, you can't see see it from here, but the park road runs up there, and on the other side of the park road uh, would be uh, uh, Chamberlain's 20th Main at the far left position. So this was an area of the battlefield I hadn't actually been to before. I've been to the 20th Main's position, but not down on these lower slopes um, where the 83rd Pennsylvania was stationed. At the left flank marker of the 20th Main, looking back up along their line on a little round top, the lower slope. Um, their right flank marker, because their line was refused, their right flank marker, their line had actually run out along this ridge of rocks here, um, out to a point, and then back around to the right there, um, to the right flank marker is bent back sort of in a V position um, from where the units were actually staged. And so again, that's, historically this would have been much less wooded um, with very little undergrowth than it has now. Um, but I'm kind of surprised I'm actually here by myself. This is usually a very crowded part of the battlefield. So kind of nice to have some quiet moments um, here where the 20th Main fought. I suspect this other path may go off to where um, their detached companies were uh, functioning as the reserve for the regiment. it on my way down this little trail here um, but this position creates sort of a spur or a ridge along here where they would have likely been positioned and up here on the crest a little round top looking at the 44th New York monument and uh, I believe down there is the 16th Michigan it from here. I believe that's their monument down there, a little further down the slope. And then looking here, out over Devil's Den, you can see it down there. And the big tree there on the crest is near where Smith's Battery was. Um, and just in front of that, then you can't really see it because the terrain, the way the terrain undulates, but um, sort of between <coughs> The, uh, if I can get my hands, ah, there we go. I'm trying to point, but it's going to be out of focus because I'm so zoomed in. Um, but the triangular field would be roughly right in front of um, the where the cannon are down there, and then 
the statue um, of the monument, kind of that did the big tree, and then the monument on the right where the other tree line starts is about where the triangular field would be, and that was where lots of back and forth fighting was going on for control of Devil's Den. And uh, what I've continually failed to call this yesterday, this whole ridge that Devil's Den is on, and that runs over to the back side of the wheat field, which is just on the other side of these trees. You can see just the edge of it peeking out there. This is Houck's Ridge, which I completely forgot about yesterday when I was describing where all this action into the wheat field is coming from. And that row of markers there is the, the uh, monuments to the U.S. regulars that marched ever so briefly into the wheat field before they were shot at from all sides and had to pull back um, across Houck's Ridge, across Plum Run Valley, and back to the base of Little Round Top and uh, safer ground. Um, but it is a great vantage point of the entire battlefield from here. You can look back up there and see the statue against the sky of the Governor Warren statue. And then uh, again, a commanding view of the Devil's Den fighting and where you would have seen the uh, Laws Alabamians skirting along on the slopes of Big Round Top. Um, trying to take cover from the Union fire coming from the slopes of Little Round Top. So this is on kind of the north side of Little Round Top. And if you walk back up in that direction, you'll head back up to the summit where the Warren statue is. Um, you can see here a couple of Sixth Corps monuments. And the, the 98 Pennsylvania one, they put one here on the little round top, but then they also have one further down where I was yesterday, um, over in that direction, uh, where the rest of the Sixth Corps monuments are for the, hey, we just sat here, we got here after all the fighting was over, and then waited here for a couple of days. Um, through the trees here, you can see kind of the, that's the Cedric monument, again, Sixth Corps was not particularly heavily engaged. A couple of units saw some action um, because they helped the Pennsylvania Reserves uh, stop the Confederate breakthrough from the wheat field, which is just down here. And again, this is where I was yesterday. Um, looking here, you can see that cut the distance where those cars are driving. That's the wheat field road that leads out to the peach orchard. And the, the yellow grass there in front of it, that is part of the wheat field. And that was where Crawford's Pennsylvania Reserve Brigade um, and uh, a couple of Sixth Corps regiments uh, repulsed the final Confederate attempt to break through the Union position, um, which, you know, I mean, essentially they had. The problem was is when they broke through the, wheat, the units in the wheat field that were helping support Sickles' salient, the main line back here, um, and then stretching north along this direction, directly in front of me, all the way back up Cemetery Ridge. The problem is the entire Sixth Corps was sitting back here, which was, you know, 14,000 men or whatever. So uh, the Confederates would not have been able to have any sort of sustained breakthrough, even if the exhausted Georgians, I think it was Wofford's men maybe, who were at the last trying to force their way through here before being turned back by the, the Pennsylvania Reserves and some of the Sixth Corps. Um, they, uh, would not have been able to, to stay here, really, with the, once the, if the Sixth Corps had counterattacked in earnest. And so this is, again, starting where the wheat field is there in the distance, and then along the front of the tree line here is Houck's Ridge, um, leading to, just around the slope of Little Round Top here, leading to uh, um, the Devil's Den. So I just wanted to get this little perspective. On the battlefield, I've never been to this portion of Little Round Top, so it's always interesting to, to get new vantage points on this uh, familiar terrain.